The problem reads, Merriam Bloom manometer fluid is SG 1.75. Calculate the density rho, the specific weight gamma, and the weight of one liter of this fluid in SI units. And then do rho, gamma, and the weight of one quart in imperial units. One liter equal to 1.06 quarts. I have found that no matter where you live, you have to know how to use both units, so we are doing that. Notice that if we start like we always do by writing down our data, the only data we have is that SG equals 1.75. And this is good for both SI and imperial units. Let's get our formulas up. We know that SG is the ratio of the, the density of the fluid to the density of water. So what we know is that rho of our fluid is equal to rho of water times SG. And we can find that formula right here, right? The rho of our substance is rho of water times SG. So we know that rho of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed and times 1.75, no units there, and we get 1,750 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's the answer to that part of the problem. Now, gamma. It is really good if you can remember these formulas. Gamma is equal to SG times 9.81, that's the value of gravity if you notice it, kilonewtons over meters cubed. This is the hard one to remember. Um, SG times 62.4 pounds per feet cubed, and that's because we have to do kilonewtons to pounds using this formula, and then meters cubed to feet cubed using the fact that a foot is 0 0.307 meter. Anyway, try to remember these by heart if you're not allowed to have formulas. So anyway, SG, 1.75 times 9.81, kilonewtons per meter cubed. That's the correct unit. Get our calculator. So 1.75 times 9.81. We expect it to be a little bit less than 17 because this is a little smaller than 10. 17.2. 17.2 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Now the last thing we need to calculate is the weight of one liter of this fluid. So we're looking for the weight, probably in newtons or kilonewtons, of one liter of fluid. And do we have something similar to that so that we can work this out? And the answer is yes. This is in kilonewtons and meters cubed, so we have 17.2 kilonewtons over meters cubed. So let's change this into newtons, so we would have 1,000 newtons over a kilonewton, and we would have uh, meters cubed over 1,000 liters. So all of our units cancel, leaving us with newtons, liters with liters, meters cubed with meters cubed, kilonewtons with kilonewtons, and the thousands cancel, and we're simply left with 17.2 newtons. So those are our three things that we were asked to calculate in SI units. We're left to do the imperial units. Let's do rho, the same formula. So rho is rho w times sg, except that now we're using 1.94, 1.94 slugs per feet cubed times 1.75 so that would be 1.94 times 1.75 equals 3.4 slugs per feet cubed. 3.4 slugs per feet cubed. And then gamma. Gamma equals 1.75 times 62.4 pounds per feet cubed equals 1.75 times 62.4 and we get 109.2 so 
two pounds per feet cubed. And now the last thing we need to do is calculate the weight of one quart in imperial units. So what is that unit, by the way, for weight in imperial units? It's pounds. Pounds force officially, but still pounds. So we want the weight of one quart in pounds, and we have one liter is 1.06 quarts. We start the same way as here. We start by writing weight over one quart. But here we could use gamma because we had a relationship between meters cubed and liters. Here we have no relationship between feet cubed and quarts. But we do know liters. We have 17.2 newtons per liter. We know newtons to pounds, and we know liters to quarts. So that should do it for us. So this is equal to 17.2 newtons for one liter. That's what we got from here. We want pounds on the top, so 225 pounds over a kilonewton. That's 1,000 newtons. That gives rid of the newtons. Now we need to get rid of the liters and the quarts. So one liter is equal to 1.06 quarts. Everything cancels. So quarts cancels with quarts, newtons with newtons, liters with liters, and we're left with pounds. So let's get our calculator up, and we have 17 point, and we can use this one, or just two, from here, times 225 divided by 1,000 divided by 1.06, and that gives us 3.65 pounds. 3.65 pounds, which makes sense. So these are all of our answers. And we are done.